distant snow mass, and as the sun sets behind the Rocky Mountains, we fire up the lights as X Games Aspen 2024 continues on as we bring you Chipotle Women's Ski Superpipe. Welcome everyone to the base of the Superpipe. My name is Jimmy Coleman. Alongside me on this journey tonight is Maggie Voice. And well, Maggie, when you talk about Superpipe here for the women, you have to talk about two returning gold medalists, Eileen Gu and Zoe Atkin. Yes, Eileen, she is the girl to beat tonight. And let me tell you, it is gonna be tough. She won the 2022 Olympics in this event, and she has won every pipe contest she has skied in since then. And then we can't forget about our defending gold medalist, Zoe Atkin. It was tough conditions last year in this event, and she persevered and came home with the gold. And she has already has a couple podiums under her belt this season. So we'll see if she has what it takes to defend her title. Well, those are going to be two of the top two to watch for here, but there's six other competitors in the field that are going to have something to say about it. However, Eileen Gu, she comes into this one wearing a lot of hats this weekend. And for more on that, let's check in with the third member of our team, Kristen Beat. Thanks, Jimmy. You know, Eileen Gu is an icon. She's a full-time student at Stanford with 16 credits. She's a gender equality advocate. She's a professional skier, an Olympian, an X Games medalist. Oh, and a high fashion model. Guys, she was Action Sports Person of the Year in Paris, Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People. She models for luxury brands like Louis Vuitton and Porsche. But after sustaining a right hip flexor injury during practice, Eileen Gu withdrew from slope style, and there is some skepticism as to where she's at entering this competition. Could she be spreading herself too thin? Well, I had a chance to check in with the overachiever this weekend, and I asked her about that. She said that she is entering this competition with unwavering confidence in herself. When she does have time on the snow, it's impactful, it's meaningful and productive time. And guys, even at 50%, Eileen Gu is still the odds-on favorite to win gold here in women's super pipe. She's just a generational talent who is so dynamic and dimensional to watch. Well, thank you very much, Kristen. We'll see how she fares through the tonight with that injury. She was your gold medalist here in 2021. We talked about Zoe earlier. As you mentioned, Maggie, she comes in your defending gold medalist. But as we walk the line here, there's a pretty stacked field out here tonight. So this one is up for grabs. Who are some of your other standouts on the start list here tonight? Yes, we have a group of talented young ladies out here. I mean, some other names to throw out are Svea Irving. She got a bronze here last year. Amy Frazier, she has a big Switch 900 that I think she's going to throw for us tonight. So it's going to be exciting. We have a couple of X Games rookies in the mix out here tonight as well. And uh, this one is going to be a party underneath the lights as we get set to kick this one off. Courtesy of our friends over at Chipotle. Again, Chipotle Women's Ski Superpipe out here tonight. Under the lights, what a, bad, what a great way to kick off a Saturday night party out here on the mountain. I know, this is the best. I mean, there's some Something magical about being under the lights here in Aspen, here at X Games. I love the energy. I love the vibe. And it's fun. We're down here in the mix this year. Of the last seven women's super pipe events here in Aspen, there have been six different winners and only two of the previous gold medalists here in the lineup tonight, Eileen and Zoe. So we started off with one of those X Games rookies that I was mentioning to you. I don't, Korea, this is Eugene Jang that's going to have to get things started for her. First gear from South Korea to compete at the X Games. Oh, love it. I love her energy at the top, the smiles. She's shown us that she's just so excited to be here at X Games. So there's three runs out here tonight. It is your best run that counts. The judges are working off of a 100-point scale. And here we go with Eugene Jang. All right, dropping in here. Starting us off with a big 900. Oh, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Giving us an alley-oop rotation. Oh, I love it. What a strong start here. You can just see her confidence as she skis down the pipe and giving us a both variety of directions. Switch, switch right, forward and back. This is such a great first run, and it's so nice. Oh, going a little deep on that landing, but holding on and giving us a nice big Japan grab there. Kind of picked it back up on the height factor towards the bottom of the run there, but seemed to be struggling with some speed there in the middle of the run right there. I mean, height definitely a factor there. They want to see you kind of peak at the end of your run. Absolutely. Amplitude is something that the judges are really, really looking for. And as you can see on that first 900, she went absolutely massive. And that's the thing that's really tough about Pike. It's hard to keep your amplitude as you get further down. Okay, we'll see what she checks in here. Again, they're working off of a 100-point scale out here tonight. So, Eugene, welcome to the X Games. You start off with a 69.66. Not a bad way to start off your first ever X Games appearance. You know, and it's always great to put down your first run. It gives you the confidence, and all you can do from there is just level up. 
Well, it's never fun to be the first one right out of the gate, especially when you're brand new to this. And they <laughs> sh shook off the jitters right there, making it happen. We move on to Germany's Sabrina Kakmakli. This is her second X Games appearance. Yes, Sabrina, she is no stranger here to the X Games Superpipe. So let's see what she has for us. Her best finish was a seventh here in Aspen back in 2018. And she's set to send it for her first of three attempts. Here she is taking some deep breaths, getting dialed in for us. All right, starting off switch, I like this. Oh, yes, the big switch seven. Oh, no. She loses Ooh, ski. Yeah, Good lost a shoe there. Oh. So that's a tough break right there for Sabrina. Such a bummer to see that on your first hit, especially, but I love it. Um, I, to me, if you're going to have that happen, you might as well get it out of the way first that, instead of having that happen in ladder rounds. I, absolutely. And you know what? It's also a bummer if you were to crash on your last hit. You have a yeah. perfect run. Yeah, that, did, that so. thing just came off as she was going down the transition. I mean, that could have been a lot worse right there at yeah. the point where the ski came off. Yeah, glad to see her up, and she looks like she's doing just fine. I think her, her coaches are going to need to check her din or something. So obviously that one's going to be the throwaway score for her. The first German skier to compete in women's superpipe. So we'll see more of her in rounds two and three. Yep, she's got two more runs out here to show us what she's got. Oh, and giving us a nice little show. The ladies told me that this is the best superpipe that they have hit all season long. So... so Sabrina makes her way to the bottom of the pipe there. Get the skis checked out there. Let's talk about what's at stake out here tonight at Chipotle Women's Ski Super Pipe. Obviously, everyone chasing gold out here tonight. And uh, Maggie, let's talk about uh, the criteria that the judges are looking at this evening. Yeah, so the biggest thing is amplitude, difficulty, combinations, and execution. So you'll be seeing this from all the ladies. And once again, I think they're also trying to emphasize style and creativity a little bit more out here t tonight, too. And again, working off of that 100-point scale. And it is the best run that counts. So even though uh, Sabrina had a little bit of an issue right there, you do get two throwaway runs. It's your best run that counts. As we move on to yet another X Games rookie in the lineup out here tonight from not too far down the road, hailing from Steamboat Springs, we welcome Riley Jacobs to the X Games. Oh, I absolutely love the rookie energy out here. These athletes, I think, it's just a little less pressure, and they have nothing to lose. So they always throw down. Wow, starting off with that beautiful 900 right there for us. Into the 720. Yes, with the switch 360. Oh, going for the Japan grab on that 540. Wow, what a solid run and finishing us with a 540 at the end. Wow, for a rookie, that is so exciting to put your first run down. Yeah, to have that pressure to come out here, I mean, with the amount of fans that we have out here, you're underneath the lights, and then going through the intros and all that, knowing the cameras are rolling, I mean, nicely done on your first attempt, Riley Jacobs. And here we go with the replay. This first 900, reaching back and going for that tail grab. Wow, beautifully done, and so much amplitude on that. And then here you see her going for the mute grab. It's where you grab just right in front of your ski, and you cross it and kind of can pull it hard. But here we are waiting for a score. So we're into the 80s there. So the rookie's going to find herself at the top of the standings as of right now with an 81.66. So again, a great way to start off your X Games career. Riley I mean, Jacobs sitting in the top spot. Look at her face. She's not bummed at all. <laughs> great start. As we turn our attention to Canada's Dylan Glenny, Aspen 2024. This will be her third X Games appearance. Her prior two appearances out of the last two years, she had to settle for sixth place out here in Superpipe. Yeah, Dylan, such a strong rider, and she has so many technical switch hits, which I love seeing. It's super hard to link those tricks and keep your amplitude down the pipe, so we'll see what she has for us. In Ooh, yes, love the style on that straighter. Heading into a big 900, clipping the deck just a little bit, but holding on. And then there's her signature flare. All right, going to 720. All right, what a great run she is putting together. Wow, these girls are absolutely throwing down. <laughs> and there we have it, Hannah. 
I love the size. Go, Dill, go. I mean, look at the height. I mean, that eight and a half feet right there for the highest, that was actually right. That was the first hit, and the speed didn't uh, didn't get affected, as you mentioned earlier, at the top of the run. She clipped the deck. Yeah, clipped the deck, but was able to hold on and keep her speed, keep her momentum, and that amplitude, as you can see right here on this flare. So it's Riley Jacobs in that top spot with an 81.66. So Dylan's going to get a 74.66. So let us slide her in right behind Riley right now into the number two position. We're halfway through the run order here in round one out of three. This is Winter Park, Colorado's Svea Irving also making her third X Games appearance out here tonight. She got a bronze and super pipe out here last year after getting in off the alternate list. Is that right? I, I did not know that. Yeah, Svea came out and absolutely gave us a show last year. And I know she has some big tricks in store for us. She's so. a senior at CU Boulder studying strategic communications. It's kind of getting in the right headspace right here. And here we go. Svea Irving in for her first of three. All right, Svea, let's see what you got. Oh, beautiful alley -oop flat five. Right into the left side, 540. Get us a 720 landing switch. 360 mute grab. Oh. Great run for Spain. Oh, and finishing off with the 900. Wow, these girls are absolutely throwing down on their first runs. With some pop there on that last hit, she was a little over seven feet on that one, so finishing with some good pop, some good energy. I mean, you know it's going to be a good event when all the ladies are throwing down on their first runs. So we have so much in store for us tonight. And here's the replay of that alley-oop flat five. So much style, landing deep, holding on, tweaking out that mute grab, and finishing off with that beautiful 900. And getting the safety grab in there for a little bit. Love to see it. In April 2023, she injured her right shoulder skiing in the backcountry, had surgery soon after. She wasn't recovered until November of last year. She gets an 85.33. Wow. Svea Irving, yes, guess what? Svea. You just jumped to the top of the leaderboard. Oh, this is crazy. Like I said, these girls are absolutely throwing down. First run, big scores are coming out. This is exciting. Well, this is a perfect time to check in with our judges in the booth and put them on the spot. Jason Aarons, what was it that stood out to you guys about that run from Svea? Uh, just some really good amplitude throughout, really locked in grabs and a nice uh, back and forth spinning in quite a few different directions. So uh, we really liked what we saw out of Svea's run and excited to see the rest of the skiers come down. I like how Dan Allen was trying not to crack a smile right there as Jason was going through that right there. Thank you, Jason. The boys are on for, camera. For the inside, yeah, that, <laughs> They're not used Jason's to that, Jason's on the they? hot seat. The rest of them aren't too <laughs> fond of being on that camera, but those guys have their work cut out for them down there in the booth as we turn our attention here to Calgary's Amy Frazier. Uh, Amy. Fourth in Aspen last year in Superpipe. Just missed the podium. That's her only prior X Games appearance. Oh, the chocolate medal. I know how it feels to get that fourth <laughs> place. I do. So I'm sure she's going to be giving it her all. This would be her first X Games gold medal if she can put it down here for us tonight. It's coming in big with the switch. Oh, going for that 900 right off the bat. But unfortunately, she just kind of squeaked it around, which is a, just going to mess with her amplitude throughout the rest of the run. I think she knows it's a bit of a throwaway, but so stoked to see her pull that out right in the beginning, right at first run. Yeah, but the way the judges are looking at this, you can't have any slip-ups, so you just kind of use the rest of this run to go through the motions again. As we talked about at the top of the show with the format, it's the best run that counts, so you do have three chances at it out here, so we'll look to round two here for Amy. Yeah, exactly. Once again, that switch 900 is so impressive. I really hope that she gets that around, but she has two more chances. I have no doubt in my mind she's going to make it happen out here tonight. And here she is just kind of practicing, you know, since she unfortunately had a little bobble on that first hit, she's just using the rest of the pipe to just keep practicing. See where this ranks her overall. So a 40.66. So that's a 
right now, that's good enough to put her in that number six position. So Svea Irving sitting in the top spot with an 85.33. Riley Jacobs in second. And then Dylan Glennie sitting in third as of right now. But that is going to bring up Eileen Gu, one of the two standouts that we talked about at the top of the show. Three X Games medals total, and all three of those come from her, her lone appearance in Aspen 2021. She got a super pipe and a slope style gold. She walked away with a bigger bronze that year as well. We haven't seen her out here in competition in Aspen since then. Yeah, it's so great to have Eileen back here at X Games competing. And I know, unfortunately, she had training in crash. I know Kristen talked about that. And her, one of her hips is really bothering her. I had a conversation with her, and she said, Maggie, I've never had to ski through pain like this. But, I mean, if anyone can make it happen out here with a little bit of practice, it's Eileen. She has her run on lock dialed. So I'm excited to see her make this happen. And just so happy she can be competing out here tonight. Yeah, it's that right hip. And, I mean, just the sheer determination and will that she has. So this is prior to the run, just up there kind of going through the motion. This was about five minutes ago, just kind of going through it in her mind right there, trying to just stave off the paint, actually getting that hip worked on there as yeah. well. You can kind of see her flinch there for a second. It looked like it definitely looks pretty painful. I mean, but the, the hip, that's everything in your rotations. It's everything. I mean, your legs are everything. But wow, starting us off with a beautiful 900 right into the left side nine. I mean, she's over 10 feet. Look at, look at that height six. meter. That's amazing. I mean, she does not look like she's hurting out there at all tonight, Jimmy. Look she was increasing her height as she made her way through the pipe. Oh, my gosh. What an unbelievable run. And people, she didn't have very much practice and is nursing a hip injury. I mean, that was incredible. And look at the height meter. 11 feet is her highest hit. I mean, she was going higher as she went through the run. She said, take that right hip. I'm not going to be phased. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Welcome back to X Games. Eileen Gu. Wow. And here we have a look at these first two 900s back to back. Oh, so much amplitude. And look at that grab. So solid. Going for the Japan grab, which is reaching back underneath your leg for the other ski. Making it look so easy. Yet, it is so technical. And then with this beautiful alley -oop flat five. Wow, Eileen Gu. She is back and back with a bang. I mean, to have a hip injury and just to try to pump the transition, look at the reaction as she comes into the base of the pipe right there. And rightly so. I mean, we kept talking about that hip. You saw it getting worked on. What is it going to be Yeah, <laughs> on the chat? OMG, this girl. You're absolutely you're right. right. We're into blind. the 90s. A 94.66. Wow. Eileen. She's Impressive. standing five feet in front of us with a giant smile on her face, and rightly so. Welcome back to competition at the X Games. Eileen Gu. Oh, my goodness. So that'll bump Sam Irving down to second and Riley Jacobs down to that bronze medal spot with one skier left to go in the lineup. Again, if you're just joining us, this is round one. We have three rounds total. It's best run that counts. Yep. And this skier we're about to see next just happens to be your defending gold medalist from last year. It's Park City, Utah, Zoe Atkin. Zoe Atkin, if anyone can nip at Eileen's heels, it is Zoe. I mean, I think this is going to be a bit of a battle tonight, so we'll see what she can bring. Once again, these ladies told me they absolutely love this half pipe, so I'm so excited to see what Zoe has to show us for tonight. Getting into her position, she's going to start this one off from the skier's left, eyeing this up. Look at that look of determination. Oh, you can see it in her face, in her eyes. <laughs> She's like, okay, 94.66, here we go. Here we go. Yes, look at that amplitude. That is like one of her signature tricks. The 540 going absolutely massive. Headed into this next hit switch. Oh, switch seven. Give us another styly 540. Oh, landing switch coming into this last hit. Yes, she got it. Wow. These girls are on fire tonight. Her and Eileen are the only two that have hit the 10-foot-plus range when it comes to the height of the years. She ended up, her second hit was four foot and some change, and then she managed to, to fight through that game more speed and get up back up to eight feet on that third hit. Yeah, it's absolutely impressive. These females, to keep their amplitude, they're really pumping the transitions of this half pipe. Um, really using that leg strength. And like I said, keeping your amplitude down this entire pipe is so crucial. It's something that the judges are really looking at. Oh.
This switch hit. Going back for the tail grab, touching it, stomping. Once again, I mean, that was our first run for the ladies. I am so impressed. So an 89, she's going to be knocking on the door of the 90s. It's good enough to put her in silver medal contention for right now. Unfortunately, that's going to bump Riley Jacobs out and put Svea Irving down in that bronze medal spot. However, that's the end of round number one. We still have two more rounds of runs left to go, but it's Eileen Goose sitting in the top spot for Mal. We'll have more from Women's Ski Superpipe when we return to Aspen. This young lady here is in her rookie appearance out here. It's Eileen Goop. Starting it off with a big cork 900 to the right, mirroring it. Wow. Cork 900 to the left. Alley oop, flat spin. A big run out of Eileen Goo to start things off. There it is. I mean, dominating every run she was skiing. Incredible. Getting the gold medal there. That was a look back to her 2021 gold medal performance. The one time we've seen her in competition here at the X Games. And here in round one of 2024, she finds herself in the top spot with a 94.66 here in Chipotle Women's Ski Superpipe. Taking the sled ride back up to the top. Before we get to the start of round number two, we'll check in one more time with Kristen. After their first runs, I checked in with Eileen Gu and Zoe Atkin. Eileen had pointed to her goggles on the podium. She rhinestoned them herself. I also asked her how she's controlling the pain. She took off her glove, written on her hand in pen. Pain is temporary. This girl is an absolute warrior. Now, I also checked in with Zoe. I asked her what she plans on perfecting in her next run. She said she wants to clean it up, more amplitude, and she may even have a new trick to unveil. Thank you, Kristen. Yeah, pain was definitely temporary for that young lady in that first run. That did not look like the run of a person that was suffering from a right hip injury, especially with the face that she made when we saw her getting tended to before the run. And I <laughs> love Zoe Atkins' look, but she looked down the pipe with just the, the death stare before she was ready to go. Yep. Look at her back on top of Eileen. She's still getting that hip stretched up. But my goodness, her performance, that was... That was huge with a 94.66. However, that's just one round. There's two more rounds yet to go. It's your best run that counts. We go back up top to one of our X Games rookies. It's Korea's Yujin Jang. All right, yeah, she just landed a beautiful first run. So from here, all you have to do is just keep upping it. I mean, that's the beauty of landing the first run is just keep pushing it a little harder. Dropping in here for us. Starting off with a big left right and oh, just kind of squeaking it around. Just not and all she, the way around in that rotation. Yep, and she knows, she knows the judges are going to critique that. It's not going to be enough, so she's going to give us a little straight air show down the pipe. I love it. Yeah, to her credit, to come in your first time ever at the X Games and to put in a complete run the first go around right there. I mean, getting that out of the way early on, I mean, it's, right on to you, Eugene. It's everything, absolutely. And look at that smile. She's not defeated. Oh, I love the energy from her. She studies at Korea University. She's interested in international sports, finding herself on an international sports stage out here this weekend in Aspen Snowmass. And look at that cheetah outfit. She got the cheetah goggle strap. 
was going to say, she's very in fashion train down I here know, on the mountain I'm this weekend. <laughs> so we'll look to see more of her in round number three as we bring back up Sabrina Kakmakli. She had a little slip up there in that first run, looking to clean this up and get out of the bottom of the pack. She currently sits in eighth place. Yeah, yeah, like you mentioned, she did have a little bit of a slip up, but she's got this run and the next run. So I have no doubt in my mind she's going to put it down for us here right now. Yes, dropping and switch. Oh, squeaking around the seven. But once again, I think she just realizes, yeah, wasn't able to get that full rotation. So unfortunately, going to have to scratch this second run yet again. But still, I'd love to see her and Amy Frazier dropping into the half pipe switch. That's not something you see a lot from these ladies out here. So big props for her on that. That's just tough when that happens twice to you and then it comes down to that third and final run. And as a competitor yourself, like, how do you get out of that mindset? Like, once that happens, you're like, I've got one more run. This isn't going my way. Like, what do you do to shake that off? I mean, absolutely. The pressure is on. But unfortunately, I think as an athlete, you have to shake it off. That was in the past. Your bobbles were in the past. You have to focus on the present, on the future, and what you can control. Well, you could hear there in the reaction shot. She said, what happened? So it's a, it's a tough spot right now, but uh, she's down but not out. She has one more run to go. We've got Riley Jacobs coming up next, but before we see her run, let's take a look at what this super pipe looks like with a GoPro point of view angle. Oh yeah, here we have it. The POV angle, point of view. Riley, I mean, these pipe walls, look at them. You can see the glare on the walls, how icy they are, how tall they are. Super pipes, as an athlete myself who skied in slopes down big air, I'm terrified of the half pipe. So <laughs> these girls are so brave and so impressive. Well, they've got perfect conditions to do it out here tonight. As we were talking about Zoe Akin at the top of the show, you could see that there was snowfall last year, which always affects the speed. But it's uh, it's been great weather out here in Aspen this weekend. So no speed issues, no visibility issues. Riley Jacobs, she was in the top three, and uh, she now finds herself one spot on the outside looking in. The X Games rookie currently sitting in a number four spot with uh, that 81.66. If you're jumping into that top three right now, you need to best an 85.33, that being held on to by Svea Irving. She had an absolutely impressive first run, and I think what she can do is just hopefully a little more amplitude and clean everything up just a little bit. So there it is, that big 900 landing deep, holding on into the 720. Come on, Riley. Oh, there we go, holding on, going deep again on that trip. Another 540 for us, and last hit, another beautiful 540 to the right side, so mirroring those 540s back to back. I unfortunately don't think that that's a little cleaner than our first run. I was just about to ask you, do you think that's going to best that 81.66 or kind of leave her in the same area? No, unfortunately, I think she just had a couple more bobbles on that run, not quite as smooth as her first, but still nonetheless landing another run out here. Yeah, just a bit shy of that with a 79, so she's going to stick with that first run score. But again, I mean, to be an X Games rookie and find yourself knocking on the door of podium contention, that is an impressive outing here under the lights tonight. We can take another look here at Dylan Glenning. She has now moved down to that number five spot with that 74.66. Once again, again, Dylan had a really great first run, but I think she just needs to clean a couple things up. Um, so we'll see what she has for us. She definitely has all the potential to up this score, so I'm super excited. So dropping in. Starting us off with that massive straight air tail grab. And there it is, the 900 landing it even cleaner this time. Into her signature flare trick into the 720 giving us a switch hit here at the bottom of the pipe switch 540 into another switch 540 that was a great run i mean she absolutely cleaned that one up i think we're going to see a higher score out of that so it was a 74.66 from the first outing we'll see what the judges think here got one score in the 90s and then the 80s go down to fourth place let's take another look here maggie all right starting us off here with that big 720 Yep. Look at the smiles. I love it. <laughs> She's got some fans on the chat waiting. Come on, Glenny. Come on, Glenny. 
So she's going to get an 83, so she's going to overtake Riley Jacobs. So wow. now Dylan Glennie finds herself one spot on the outside looking in. So knocking on the door of podium contention here, getting closer to a potential medal. We'll see what she can do in that third and final round. Svea Irving sitting in that bronze medal spot right now. You know Looking it. to build on that a little bit here. Come on, Svea. <laughs> Looking dialed in. These girls, they always, I love it. They always take their time. They find their spot. They get dialed in, take their deep breaths, probably visualize their run a little bit before dropping in. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like with the visualization process, and sometimes you'll see someone stand there and kind of do some twists and just kind of go through the body motions and whatnot and, whatnot and go through the, the run in their head. Yeah, every athlete's different, but I know visu visualization is a huge cue for all athletes. It's something that I utilized when I was competing. And there you have it, the big alley 540. Oh, beautiful five, Miriam. 7.20. There we go. Come on, Svea. But that's a classic trick. I love that alley-oop. It's a British Sigourney special. And finishing big here as she makes her way into the pipe corral. Listen to the reaction from the fans. Hey, look. Svea's in the 10-foot range. <laughs> What is it, three girls that have cracked the 10 foot height meter? Yeah, it's uh, Zoe, Eileen, and now Savea. Welcome Our to top the, three. Welcome to the 10 foot meter club. <laughs> is when you're spinning up the pipe rather than down the pipe and it's a little bit more technical it's a little bit more blind she gets unreal on the Thayer's height meter right there and again to go that high at the end of your run I mean she was at eight feet early on in the run and then struggled a little bit with height in the middle but to go 10 feet at the end yeah absolutely wow. showing that she has what it takes she has the technicality to pump and get that amplitude back throughout every single hit she bumps up the score in 87.33. Won't improve the position, but that gave her some breathing room between her and Dylan Glenn as of right now. But again, I mean, to go 10 feet on your last hit, that was impressive. Absolutely impressive. And like you said, too, being on that third place bubble spot, I mean, you have the rest of the field nipping at your heels. So like you said, she didn't move up the rankings, but to get a higher score is still a breath of fresh air. For yeah, that, that's not the spot you want to be, but when you bump the score up a little bit, not a bad place to be going into round number three as we bring back in Canada's Amy Fraser. All right, Amy, let's see if she has this switch trick this time. There we go, the switch down the pipe, 900. This is a signature trip, trip for Amy, and it's so impressive. Stoked to see her bring it out. Here she has the flare. Let's see what she has for us down at the bottom of the pipe. And 900 holding on. And mirroring it with the other way, 900. Wow, that was awesome, Jimmy. She looked at that 40.66 and said, you know what? I'm tired of looking at that number. I want something higher. You want to know what's impressive? She did three 900s in that run. She is the only girl doing that right now and out here tonight. And here we have the replay, looking at this switch hit. Bam, stomping. <laughs> I mean, I think the only thing, like I said, being the girl only doing three, or the only girl to do three nines out here, that's obviously one of the more technical runs we've seen. But I don't know, compared to Eileen's run, Eileen has the amplitude, and I think that's something the judges are really going to critique her on. She gets an 84.33, so Amy Fraser overtakes Dylan Glennie now. She sits on that uh, podium contention spot right now in fourth. So, wow, look at that. But again, uh, Svea Irving gave herself that breathing room with that 87.33 yeah, right there. Did. But uh, <laughs> we have two left to go in the run order here. Eileen Goose sits in that top spot with that 94.66. And then you got Zoe Atkin with that 89. And again, I mean, the height factor that we saw out of these two skiers. And, I mean, and for her with that hip injury and just to – to tune out the pain. I mean, you could see her wincing. The look on her face when they were stretching out that hip and to go through and do what she did in that first round was absolutely impressive. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like you mentioned, just when they were stretching on her hip, it looked brutal, so painful, but she did not show any signs of pain on her first run. So we'll see. I mean, she's sitting with such a great first run score of 94.66. I mean, I know she can up it, but I don't know if she needs to or if she's going to want to just because of that pain that she is in. So Knowing we'll in her drive, she would definitely want to up it. She's just got that drive, that competitive spirit. She's in for her second attempt. All right, starting us off with that. Oh, no. 
the deck check, and that isn't going to help out a hip injury at all. I mean, that is an impact. I mean, yeah, that is a 22-foot oh. wall of solid ice that you're just impacting into. Oh, well, like, it's, she's giving us that wave saying, hey, I'm all right, everybody. But, man, it's always a bummer to see her go down. But, oh, well, she's, she's smiling as she skis over she's by She's got a think, smile. <laughs> she's shaking that one off. I mean, that hurt my ankles just watching that. Yeah, there you Pain go. Kristen temporary. talked about it earlier. Pain is temporary. So that's going to be throwaway for her. Obviously, sitting in the top spot with that 94.66 will look to round number three for her. And that's going to bring up your defending gold medalist. <laughs> I'm going to bring this up again because the look that she gave looking down the pipe before that first run, she saw that score by Eileen was like, okay. All right, this okay. is what I got to do. <laughs> yeah. I got to get in the zone. Determination is in those eyes for sure. Zoe Atkin from Park City, Utah. Fans weighing in on the chat. Respect for sending it. You are absolutely right. Here we go. Yep. Zoe Atkin, run number two. Respect to all these ladies out here tonight. All right, Zoe, you on the first wall. Yes. That 540, I could watch her do that all day. Oh, my long. goodness. That's the highest air we've seen tonight. She feet. just went 12 feet. <laughs> hey, we love it. The judges are going to love it, too. <laughs> there it is, 540. Oh, so beautiful switch right 724 is to finish things off. And once again, height 12 feet, and then she went <laughs> 7 feet plus on that last hit. A little bit of struggle with maintaining the height. This one. Hey, if it was a height contest, she'd be winning. It's 12 feet. <laughs> look at it. Here it is right here. Boom. She is boosting. And look at that. Tweaked out mute grab, grabbing in front of her ski and pulling it. Like I said, I could watch her do that trick all day long. Somebody's going to have to call air traffic control over at the Aspen <laughs> oh Airport goodness, is how dude. close to the runway we are. That was massive. And one thing I want to highlight with Zoe is she has such defined grabs. And that's, you know, obviously just holding on to that ski. And that's something that the judges are really looking for. She really, really has some of the strongest grabs in the industry. I'll get the grab next time. Oh, no, well, she said, there you go. She said, mind. I'll get the grab next time. And she's into the 90s. She's not over going to take, she's not going to overtake Eileen, excuse me. But she will get into the 90s at 90.66. <laughs> Reach out there, Maggie. Give her a high five. Yes, Ali. We've completed two rounds. And it is Ali Goo, who you see right there, sitting in the top spot. We're setting the slippers down the pipe. The battle's not over just yet. We've got one more round to go. It's the conclusion of Chipotle Women's Ski Superpipe when we return to Aspen Snowmass. Welcome back, everyone. Day two of three competition out here. Aspen Snowmass. It's X Games Aspen 2024. The party continues under the lights out here tonight as we are set to kick off the third and final round of Chipotle Women's Ski Superpipe. What's happening, everyone? If you're just joining us, my name's Jimmy Coleman. I'm sitting here alongside Maggie Boys, and we got Kristen Beat out in the field. And, well, what a competition it's been thus far. It's Eileen Goo's been the story with that injured right hip, and she came out in that first run, sits in that top spot. I mean, these ladies tonight have been absolutely throwing down. You've seen all the women in the field. First runs, stomping, high scores, 80s, 90s. And here we have Eileen showing us why she's the best. Oh, and there's that alley-oop, 540. Oh, and that hand pump, she's stoked. Yeah, the hand pump said it all. I mean, she was getting that thing stretched out pre-run, did not look to be in a good headspace, and then just went out there and nailed it, and that is X Games mode and why she's sitting in the top spot as of right now. But Zoe Atkin jumped into the 90s into that last round, so she's your defending gold medalist. She's sitting in the silver medal as of right now. Svea Irving in a bronze medal as of right now. However, there's one more round of runs to go. It is best run that counts, so this one's still up for grabs if you're watching at home. Yep, one more run to shake things up, so we are gonna see what these ladies have in store. We go back up to the top and bring back in another X Games rookie. It's Yujin Jang from Korea. She started it off with a 69.66. That's been the better of her two runs thus far. That came in round one. It's good enough for seventh as of right now. She starts off the third and final round. Dropping in for us. 
Oh, I love this Cork Knight Hunter. She's doing no once again. Just looking like she's a little backseat and not able to hold on. But once again, X Games rookie, welcome here to Aspen the X Games. And I absolutely love her energy. And this cheetah thing, this is great. <laughs> you liking the jacket? Oh, and look at these straight airs. You're, you're giving her style points is what you're telling me. Oh, yeah. Style is everything. Style on your skis, but also what you're wearing. Yeah. I, again, to her credit, to come out, you're the first one Thank to drop you. in the... Hey. Thank you, Eugene. You were the first one to drop. It's your first X Games, and you put a run down the first go around. I mean... She That's might be my new favorite skier. I love her energy. You can just tell she's so excited as a rookie to be here at X Games. I mean, how did you feel your first time out here at the X Games? Oh, my gosh. I was mind blown. It was a childhood dream of mine. So, <laughs> uh. so that'll bring up Sabrina Kekmackley. We talked about this earlier. She's in a, a bit of a pressure cooker situation. She's had some slip-ups and runs one and two. It's got her down at the bottom of the pack, and we talked about this in the last round. Unfortunately, that kind of puts all the pressure on your shoulders here in round three. Yeah, it's definitely a lot when the pressure's on when you have not landed a run yet, but let's see if she can just focus in and dial in what she needs to. This first hit has definitely been a difficult go for us, but here she is. Come on, Sabrina. So it looks like she's just going for a little bit easier trick instead of that bigger rotation, which I totally understand. Sometimes that's what you have to do to keep the pressure off. Is like, hey, what's a run that I can land and I can get a score up on the board? So. Just decided to call an audible on this one. Trying to eclipse that 31.33. Yeah, look at that. That was something unique. Carving back up the wall. I think she just knows it's not her night. Unfortunately, sometimes that happens. Oh, yeah, the, the look, look at her face and just kind of says it all. Oh, Sabrina. Uh, and the sigh. You know, it's such a bummer. You come out here to X Games and you want to just put down your best skiing, but like I mentioned, sometimes it's just not your day. You know, and it's only her third time actually competing out here. She's in pipe. She's been here plenty of times, but uh, she's been an alternate four different times. And as I said earlier, her best finish was seventh back in 2018. We move on to Riley Jacobs. She was knocking on the door of podium contention. She's bumped down a couple of spots. She now finds herself sitting in sixth place. Her best outing was an 81.66, another one of our X Games rookies. She's got the GoPro on, I love it. Giving us all the POV shots. <laughs> Did you see that stare looking down pipe? Determination She's yet like, again. Okay. She's like, oh. <laughs> oh, there it is, that big 900 to start things off. Into the 720. Ooh, big switch seven down here. All right, left side 540. Finishing it off with another right side 540, mirroring those tricks. Wow. I mean, I'm just so stoked for her. Her coming out here as a rookie and landing all three runs, that's so impressive. She, I hope she's really proud of herself. Let's take another look here in slow-mo. Oh, yeah. Reaching back, trying to get that tail grab, and unfortunately just kind of tickling the tail. Um, and then here she has right here at the bottom, tweaking out that mute grab on this right side 540. Let's go. Oh, I love it. You can just hear her and how excited she is. So she'll bump the score up a little bit. She ends up with an 82 flat. Unfortunately, that's not going to move up the place in there. But again, welcome to the X Games, Riley Jacobs. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> So three down, five left to go here in Chipotle Women's Ski Superpipe. Eileen Gu, Zoe Atkins, Svea Irving, your one, two, three. It is best run that counts. Dylan Glennick currently sitting in fifth place right now with an 83 flat. Yeah, Dylan, she's had two really great runs, but I think, unfortunately, she just hasn't been able to really squeak up that score a bit due to just some, you know, I think just I some technical math. issues. And, and here we have it. On course. Oh, love that. Seven, seven oh, there's the 900. I love her signature flare. Yeah, she just, I think in those first two rooms, just needed to clean it up, and she's proving that she's got it. Big switch 540 coming into this last hit. Oh, and back-to-back -back switch 540s. I 
definitely think that was an improvement from her first two runs. But like I mentioned, just her amplitude and unfortunately I think just the grabs, those are the things that the judges are going to be looking for. Something like a, someone like Eileen who really defines those grabs and has a huge amplitude. So you think that one might be a little bit better? She had an 83 flat. I'm no judge, but. <laughs> hey, listen, sometimes I get you to walk the plank like that. <laughs> and she's going to get an 83.33, so it will improve the score, but not the placing. So four down, four left to go here in Chipotle Women's Ski Super Fight. Eileen Goose sitting in the top spot. Will she claim go? That's Hannah Fallhaber right there with the case, the coveted case with the medals. We'll find out who's going to stand on the podium when we return to X Games Aspen 2024. We're out here the day before X Games, getting things ready for the big day. This is feature five on the slope style course right now. We've decided to make a, an adjustment to this feature. Basically, if the angle is off, the athlete can't land where they're supposed to. The light up here isn't that great, and sometimes it just doesn't come through on the photos. So having the S24 low light camera and, and sending crystal clear photos to all the athletes or the team managers is amazing. There's not many people that can be away from home as long as we are. Yeah, you're living in a hotel, you're living out of a bag, but everybody here is a family. Hey babe, how's it going? Sorry I couldn't call you earlier. Early mornings, late nights, you know the routine. Call me when you get a chance. Love you, bye. You know, I'm away for months at a time, but my S24 keeps me connected with my loved ones, and I appreciate that. Oh, it's awesome to, to see everything come together. We, you know, we've been out here for roughly five weeks getting all this stuff built, whether it was the half pipe, the slope style, or the street course, the big air. It's been an epic day. Thanks for following along. Yeah, some of the unsung heroes out here at X Games, the course builders. I mean, we just get to come in for the weekend, but these guys are here for almost a month. And I mean, it's long days out here. It's cold. You're dealing with the elements and the work that they put in to make the pipe as well as the slope style and the big air courses. We could not do it without them, as you saw there in that Samsung Day in the Life feature. But it is a packed house out here tonight. Day two of three. Competition continues here from X Games Aspen 2024. And you're looking at an epic view up pipe right here. We have four skiers left to go. Svea Irving, she got a bronze medal last year. She's sitting in a bronze medal spot as of right now. She bumped up that last score, uh, two full points. She's looking at another potential medal. But again, you would love to give yourself some more breathing room. Also, she'd love to trade that up a little bit. Try to get <laughs> herself sure. a medal of a shinier color. Color. Hey, she's like, I got a bronze last year. I had at least like a silver or something. <laughs> hey, nothing bad with leaving here with a medal, but she's like, you know what? I, bronze was so last year. It was it's 2024. So last year. Give me something new. <laughs> she sees that case down here at the bottom of the pipe. She knows what she wants. She knows, and she has what it takes. She absolutely does. And that amplitude, she had such a, she's what? Height meter was 10 feet. We've only had three girls go that big. But here comes Svea. Starting off at this big alley 540. Ooh. Just leaning a little forward on that one. Great Ooh. save. Really great save by Svea right there. Almost going a little too forward, a little head, head heavy. Oh, unfortunately, just kind of missing the takeoff on that trick, missing the grab. But she's still going for it, showing us what she's got. But I think Svea knows, unfortunately, with that one hit and kind of two hits, her landing on the first trick, but kind of flailing and missing the grab on her switch hit is going to be a big deduction for the judges. Kind of throwing her hands up right there. She's still sitting in a bronze medal. There's only one skier left that can uh, take a medal away from her that's on the outside looking in. It's our next skier, but let's take a look at some replays here. Yeah, here we have this big alley flat five. Oh, see, you can yeah. tell she goes big a little bit forward but held on perfectly and finishing off at this beautiful left side 900, getting the safety grab. Nice work, Svea. Yeah, I thought that one was going to pitch her a little more forward, but that was a great save there, so she's going to have to stick with that second run score there. Uh, there's only one skier left, as I just said, that's uh, standing between her and a potential uh, 
second medal in the last two years out here in Superpipe. We'll see how that holds up. We only have three skiers left to go here in Chipotle Women's Ski Superpipe. Amy Frazier sitting one spot on the outside looking in. She has an 84.33. Third can... and final run. And there you can see it. She had her eyes closed. She's doing that vis visualization that we were talking about just one run ago. Let's see if she has what it takes. She could knock Svea off of this podium. Sitting in that fourth place spot. She got fourth here last year. Like we mentioned, we know she wants this X Games medal so badly. So here she comes. Dropping in switch. She gonna get this switch 900 for us? Yes, I think even better than her last run. Oh, beautiful. Here's the switch 720. Flare. And what does she have for us at the bottom? A 900 to the right. One more hit. Judge gets in one more hit. Oh, and the last 900 with barely any pipe left. Oh, I don't know, Jimmy. This is going to be close. She was running out of wall right there and decided to squeak one more in. Yeah. Wow, what an impressive run, Amy. That was awesome. And like I mentioned, I'm getting a little nervous for Svea. This was such an impressive run. That switch 900 was to perfection. The only girl in the field doing that out here tonight. And finishing off with a little bit of pipe left with the left side nine. As we talked about earlier, being in that bubble spot right there. So we wait for the score. Oh, she's into the 90s. Amy Frazier, you just jumped wow. into the 90s. You overtook Svea oh. Irving. She can't believe it right now. <laughs> Look at that excitement on her face. And Jimmy, this means she gets third place, right? With only yeah, with Eileen and Zoe left to go, and they're both ahead of her. Congratulations, Amy Frazier! You're getting a bronze medal. You got fourth last year. Now you're gonna walk out of here with a bronze. Wow! Oh, so happy for Amy. You could see at the end there, she had a little bit of watery eyes. I mean, this is an exciting moment. So we're down to our final two. On the left, it's Eileen Gu, your current leader. She took gold here in 2021. On your right, Zoe Atkin coming in. You're defending gold medal. She is the last one to ski here in the lineup. And the story we've been telling all night long with Eileen, that right hip injury, she came out here in that first round and just blew it out with a monster 94.66 score. Jimmy and Eileen and Zoe both go to Stanford. I think we got to call this the Stanford standoff. <laughs> it's the Stanford off. <laughs> the Stanford off. <laughs> With these two girls in the one and two position. But it's the battle of higher education <laughs> taking place out here <laughs> in the super pipe, courtesy of Chipotle. The Stanford standoff. <laughs> Okay, look at Eileen here going through the motions. We talked about, like, okay, you got a 94.66, and you're like, okay, would she be happy with that? Just kind of back off with the hip injury? No. Look at her right now. She wants more. She absolutely does. As we it's... mentioned earlier, she's only competed out here one time. It was back in 2021. She got three medals that year. Looking at a possible gold here tonight. Oh, beautiful. Right nine, court 900 with the Buick grab. Mirroring that trick to the left. Oh, and the beautiful right side 720. Switch 360. Alley -oop flat five. Can she mirror this trick here? Easy peasy. Wow. Eileen Gu proving to us just the consistency from this from her is absolutely unbelievable. Great work out here, Eileen. I know pushing through pain is not easy, but she certainly. <laughs> See what that comment? Eileen is a cheat code at life, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know. I don't know how she does it. Juggles all the things, the school, the modeling, the skiing. It's absolutely impressive. She's an impressive piano player as well. Yeah, what can this girl not do? And here we have right here at the bottom, this alley -oop flat five going massive and bam, stomping it. Loving the bling out here tonight. <laughs> yep, she's stoked. She got that hand pump at the bottom. So again, 94.66 from that first round. She was in the top spot pre-run, but trying to bump that score up yep. a little bit. And she does a 95.66. Wow. So she's added another point.
I think if any of her professors are watching right now and she's late to class later on because of this hip injury, like, cut her a little slack. You would think so, right? But she said that her teachers don't give her any slack at all. She has to finish her assignments on time. I just meant I mean, she's late. <laughs> true. <laughs> Maybe go, being able to go 10 plus feet in the super pipe, maybe that should help your GPA a little bit. I don't know. Maybe like a little claws they ride in. All right, it all comes down to Zoe Atkin. The last thing standing between Eileen Gu and her second ever super pipe gold medal. Your defending gold medalist for last year. She's in for her last run. All right, the Stanford standoff. Can she shake things up here on her last run? I think she can go bigger, which she clearly just did. 12 feet, 12 so massive. Feet. <laughs> Another massive switch. Oh, no! Oh, on the last run, no! Oh. And Eileen knows with that fall, that is going to do it. Way to go for it still, Zoe, going absolutely huge. I mean, coming home with another medal here at X Games, a silver, she's got to be proud. And here's Eileen Gu, our gold medalist, proving why she is the best. Wow. And again, I mean, to tell the tale of that hip injury, I mean, she withdrew from the other competition she was planning to be in out here this weekend. Still wanted to get in here, get it done at Chipotle Women's Super Pipe. And I mean, that, the look on her face said it all when she was getting that stretched out. Yeah, and just it, the pain that she was in. But when you dropped into half pipe, you didn't see that at all. You saw her determination. So much resilience from this young woman. I am so, so impressed and so excited for her. What a great show here tonight. Ladies, you are absolutely crushing it, pushing the sport. I'm proud. You make everyone else proud. Hey, and let's give a big shout-out to Amy Frazier as well. She settled for fourth last year, was knocking on the door. This year, it's a tough break for Svea Irving, but she comes in and she takes a bronze medal out here. Like I mentioned, she got that chocolate medal last year. <laughs> so this year, coming home with some real hardware, I could not be more excited for her. And she brought out that Switch 900, the only girl in the field to be doing that trick and here we have Eileen a rerun slow-mo of her absolutely beautiful tricks it didn't take her foot off the gas I mean in that last run even though despite the injury and being in that top spot she went out she gave it a little more and got an extra point to boot just to try to give herself a little bit of breathing room Oh, and the camaraderie between the girls is absolutely incredible. Here we have Hannah Fall Haber. She's a half pipe skier out here. Unfortunately, had a knee injury, so she's not able to compete. But here we have it, Eileen. Let's send it down to Kristen with Congratulations. Eileen. Congratulations. You wrote it on the inside of your hand. Pain is temporary. How did you work through that pain this weekend? You know, this is probably one of the hardest things I've had to do. I've never skied with pain like this before. Just excruciating, constant. Can barely walk right now, honestly. Um, but I think it's really a testament to how much I love the sport, how much all of us love the sport. There's so much sacrifice involved. I think it's easy to see us as just these happy professional athletes who get to do flips for a living. But honestly, we really put our bodies through it, and we we sacrifice so much. And to that end, I really want to give a shout out to some of the people who are missing from here tonight. Our very own Hannah Fallhaber out right now. Um, John Christian, Li Fan Hui. Uh, Cassie out being a lovely, thoughtful, beautiful mother. Um, excited for her to come back soon. Um, and of course, Sarah Burke, who paved the way for all of us, um, pioneered the path, made the ultimate sacrifice, and um, yeah, really made a legacy. So for the rest of us, you know, it's all about pushing the sport. It's all about doing our best, conquering ourselves time and time again. Thank you, everybody here at X Games tonight. Thank you for all the support. You really got me through it. I'm serious. Thank you. Thank you. There's so there's such magic here at X Games. Um, I missed it so much. I love skiing. I love competing. I love all the fans. I love my sponsors. Thank you for having me. Let's go, Aspen. Well, wow. welcome back, Eileen Gu, and welcome back to the top of the podium. Wow, what a finish out here tonight, Maggie. What an absolutely incredible pipe event from all of these ladies. They absolutely brought it, pushing the sport to the next level. Um, so proud of these females. So, so incredible. And here's the action. Well, that is a wrap from Chipotle Women's Ski Super by Amy Frazier. Settled for fourth last year. She walks out of here with the bronze. Zoe Atkin with the silver. And Eileen Koo with her second Super Pipe gold.